Star Guild and Remorse drive us into a corner or out of the program. The more practice we get at using the steps and other tools of recovery, the more we are able to use our mistakes to propel us forward. Living Queen approval draft for decision at WSC 2012. 52. We define ourselves partly through our sexuality. For some, that definition is a major portion of our identity. Sometimes we seem to wield it like a weapon to justify our feeling different. We can be much more aware of the people who are not open to us than those who are. In the rooms of now we are welcomed regardless of our sexuality. We find people who love us and with whom we feel comfortable no matter what our sexuality or our beliefs about sexuality. Although some of us arrive in the fellowship secure in our sexual identity, others of us struggle with confusion or distortions about our gender or orientation. We may have engaged in behaviors that conflicted with our beliefs in order to continue using or to gain acceptance from others. Or we chased sex the same way we chased drugs, feeling just as powerless and out of control. Some of us follow those drives into relationship after relationship without ever really feeling fulfilled. Many of us confuse sexual connections with intimacy, and became so divorced from our feelings and desire for emotional connection that we would settle for physical interaction. This can follow as well into our recovery and may point to an ongoing struggle with opening up to emotional intimacy. For those of us who need sex as a way to move through the world, it may take quite some time to figure out the difference between being sexual and being intimate. Working through these issues takes time, trust in our sponsors and close friends, willingness to challenge our assumptions, faith in the process, and ultimately self-acceptance. The next chapter will address our relationships in more detail. What we will say here is that part of learning how to live in our bodies is learning how to acknowledge the reality of our sexuality. We want to learn to express our sexuality in healthy and fulfilling ways, something that was unimaginable in our act of addiction. Sex is different when we're clean. When we are neither numbed out nor artificially stimulated, we can be present to our own experience and to our partner in a very different way. Sometimes this can be frightening, sometimes it can be addictively exciting. Finding pleasure in our sexuality without thinking of it as a means of exchange or power can be a great freedom, for some of us. This takes longer than it does for others. We can enjoy ourselves and each other fully, in the moment, and learn what it really is to connect. We can be intimate, we can open up and be real. We don't have to use each other as a drug. When we treat each other as human beings, we find our own dignity. Thrill-seeking and adventure. Long after the obsession to use is lifted, many of us still take a rush in other ways. The drive for excitement leads us to live full and exciting lives, rich with adventure. We are unafraid to take risks and pursue the opportunity to do the things we always wish we could. Sometimes, though, it seems like we just get strung out on our own adrenaline. Whether it's gambling, sex, or creating drama in our lives, we can ramp up so fast that it's hard to scale back down. We may distract ourselves with risky behavior when we are trying to fill a void or block a feeling. It is up to each of us to find a balance between chasing a destructive rush and really living our lives to the fullest. Surprising numbers of us are fond of extreme sports. 
A member who spends his weekend scaling glaciers said, In those moments when I really am on the edge of life and death, when Living clean approval draft for decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 4, Our Physical Selves 53 I'm not sure how I'm going to find my next foothold, then I feel present to the moment. I'm not thinking about the bills or the wife or the job, just how good it is to be alive and how I'm going to stay that way. Some of us take on competitive sports or bodybuilding and get really excited about what we are doing. We find a passion and commitment for these activities that seem lost to our addiction. We have the freedom to try new things and take new risks. Many of us are partial to motorcycles, and a similar impulse may lead us to ride. We like the sense of freedom, as well as the power and the risk. Some of us drive our cars very fast, and share that the excitement is not just going fast but knowing we're getting away with something. We may think this doesn't apply to us, until our sponsor suggests that we try obeying all traffic laws for a week, just as an experiment. While some of us find acceptable ways to chase the rush throughout our recovery, others find the need settles down after a while, or the wreckage we create just gets to be too much. Sometimes, without an outlet for our energy, we just sit in our own anxiety. It can be surprising to learn that anxiety comes from the same source as our enthusiasm, it can be useful energy if we channel it, or it can be incredibly destructive. The same power that fuels our destructive impulses can fuel our excitement, creativity, and ambition. It can drive us to adventure or chaos. Like so much of what we uncover about ourselves, it can be an asset or a defect, depending on how we use it. When I found myself in self-centered fear, said one member, I would take risks that could ultimately cause me to lose everything. I was living on the edge clean so I could feel something other than the abyss of not using. I filled the void with things like gambling, shopping, anything that made me feel powerful when I am powerless. Now that I can see myself more clearly, I realize that I have to be more aggressive with treating my disease, taking its deadly nature into account. At some moment, 